It was crucifixion day. The time had come to pay for sin's debt. And death was the only way. They took a hammer and a soldier swing. They beat out redemption sounds. And from holy hands that had healed the sick, the blood came streaming down.
one of you this afternoon. This is Minister Pat Holmes with Saints on Assignment Ministries coming to you live from the secret place. And I'm too excited to share a word that the Lord deposited in my heart on Friday, followed by a dream in the wee hours of the morning, Saturday morning, and the two tied together. And I believe they will be a blessing for you. I uh, was in a local um, hardware store on Friday and I'd uh, gotten out in my truck and, and put my mask on and the whole nine yards and let me go on a little rabbit tra trail concerning the mask. I believe even though we are faith people, we're still here on planet Earth. Earth carries a curse and I believe uh, we have to uh, submit even concerning uh, the things that our uh, health departments are telling us. I realize that we have faith, but sometimes we can operate in foolish faith. And uh, I'm reminded of, of a story of, uh, I think it was Dr. Paul Young E. Cho shared many years ago a true story. A young lady read in the scriptures where Peter walked out on the waters and uh, how uh, Peter was able to walk at the uh, spoken of the rainbow word of, of the Lord. So a young lady read that and she decided to go and, and walk uh, out there in the, the sea, ocean, whatever the body of water was, and she drowned. And so many of the people were upset in the church. And Paul Young E. Cho explained about the uh, the rhema word and the logos word. So uh, anyway, I mean, if God gives you a rhema word not to wear your mask and so forth, well then follow the dictates of the Lord. But I, I do believe believe it's very important to listen uh, to our health departments and, and so forth and, and try to follow uh, what is being told and that we don't operate in foolish faith. Wearing a mask does not mean we do not have faith. Amen. So now to go back to uh, what I was telling you, the word the Lord deposited in my heart on Friday. I put my mask on, went across the parking lot, went in the store, and I, I reached up to adjust my mask. And just as as I reached up to adjust the mask, the Spirit of the Lord deposited a word in my heart, took me immediately to a word in the book of Leviticus 21. I knew exactly what he was referring to in the natural as well as to the spiritual. And in Leviticus 21, it was a word to the priests or uh, commandments or instructions, I should say, concerning the priesthood. And the Bible teaches us in the book of Revelation that we are priests and kings. Now I want to uh, say this, give this little illustration quickly before I show you uh, the scripture that the Lord uh, referred me to. There are so many that um, do not refer to the Old Testament at all. Uh, they, uh, the scripture where it said it has been fulfilled, where those ceremonial laws and religious practices and bringing uh, animals uh, to the tabernacle to be sacrificed, all of that is filled. But there's still much prophecy in the Old Testament that has to be fulfilled. And not only that, it is our foundational truths and the truths of the word of God do not change. And often the way the Lord uses me and so many others, he He'll take me back to the foundation and then he'll develop it in light of the new revelation of the New Testament. And I have an example that you will remember. Uh, this I, I taught my Bible study many years ago when I was teaching a teenage Bible study. You remember the negatives from the old picture cameras that we used to have? You know, we all have our phones, now, our cell phones, and we take pictures with our cell phone. But in the days of old, and maybe some of you still have these cameras, we would take a pictures and we would have to go and have that negative develop. Well, this reminds me of the Old Testament. Uh, somebody penned the term years ago that the Old Testament is the New Testament revealed and that the New Testament is the Old Testament concealed. You see what I'm doing? This is symbolic of the negative. It's so hard getting these pictures in the right place when I'm holding them up in front of this camera. And then when you go and get that developed, it's symbolic of the New Testament. So I'm going to show you a scripture, what he quickened to me, standing uh, right there in that, that hardware store. I'm going to show you that scripture. Let me make sure I'm getting it on the right place. Yes. 
this and then we're going to develop it. It's in the Old Testament, but we're going to show you how it pertains to us in the New Testament. And in Levit Leviticus 21, and it says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron. Aaron was Moses' brother. He was the first high priest. So he said, Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generation that has any blemish, let him not approach to the bread of his God. Let him not approach to offer the bread of, the, of his God. And then we go to verse 18. For whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach a blind man, a lame, or he that hath a flat nose, or anything superfluous. And uh, that scripture actually goes on. It has to do with the, if a man is a dwarf, if he has a crook back. It begins to name all type of, uh, any type of uh, imperfections or superfluous things. If he had a six finger on his hand. But what the Lord dealt with me with when I went to adjust that mask uh, when I was in the hardware store. He dealt with me about the mouth and the nose and took me immediately to that scripture. And... Uh, uh, a mouth, even uh, somebody, which is amazing that, that Moses was handpicked. Uh, I think he pointed to the New Testament that God can use us, and we know that he can, even with flaws and anything of that nature, because when we get in the presence of the Lord, God can perfect anything concerning us or use us. But it's strictly, again, we're dealing with the Old Testament, the way it was set up. And we know uh, that the flat nose when we take it in light of the New Testament, I'm going to hold this up just symbolic of it being developed. I'm not even sure what that is, a picture of some cabinets or something. But when we develop it in light of the New Testament, it has to do with discerning of spirits. The nose has the ability to sense. The nose has the ability to smell. And in the New Testament, one of the gifts of the spirits is discerning of spirits. In other words, having a keen nose in the realm of the spirit. And he was letting me know during this time is so important to have a keen nose in the realm of the spirit. To be able to discern good from evil and vice versa. And then also dealing with the mouth. Now I'm going to develop that a little bit more in the next graphic that I'm going to show you. Again, he zoomed in on the nose and the mouth when I was standing in the midst of that hardware store adjusting that, that mask on my face covering my nose and covering my mouth. Well early the next morning, that was on Friday, early the next morning I was in a dream and it is amazing almost threw this dream out had it not been for one thing that I saw in the dream and I knew that the Lord was revealing something significant but in this dream I was in a mall and I was shopping in what looked like a new mall. It sort of reminded me of, I don't know if any of you have been in any of the Gaylord hotels, but in the Gaylord, uh, the Gaylord is just magnificent. It's not only shopping, uh, not only stores in there to shop in, but there are buildings and it's all covered. Uh, the Gaylord, everything is covered. So it's like you're in a little city and the entire city is covered in air condition. Well, that's sort of what this reminded me of. So as I'm walking in this mall, all in the dream, I noticed one storefront that stuck out above all the other storefronts. Uh, the other storefronts was exactly like we'd expect a storefront to look. You know how they have the windows and you can look in the windows and see the displays and so forth. Well, this particular storefront had no windows on the side. I didn't see a door, but I was aware that there was a door, but I saw what was written over the door. So I made my own little graphic. It's, it's kind of pitiful from what I actually saw in the dream, but just to give you an idea of what I saw written over this door. This is my little graphic that I made of the of the dream. And written over the door was the, uh, the word Isaiah chapter 11. And, and there was some type of image under there that I believe to have been a, a Bible page. I couldn't see it real good. So here on my graphic, I actually put um, 
one of the scriptures out of Isaiah chapter 11. Well, when I, when I came out of that dream, it wasn't too long after that, of course, that I went and looked up Isaiah chapter 11. And I want to share with you what is in Isaiah chapter 11. In Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 1, and it says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Jesse was King David's grandfather, and this scripture is saying a rod is going to come forth out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch uh, shall grow out of the roots. Now, we all know that was Jesus. That was prophecy in the Old Testament through the mouth of Isaiah the prophet saying that Jesus was going to come forth out of that branch, out of that lineage. Then we go to Isaiah 11 verse 2 and it says, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now, we all know there was a sevenfold anointing upon Jesus. You can count them as, as I read them here. First of all, the spirit of the Lord Number one, shall rest upon him. Number two, the spirit of wisdom. Number three, spirit of understanding. Number four, spirit of counsel. And number five, spirit of might. Six, spirit of knowledge. And listen to the last one. And the fear of the Lord. And I know the Lord was zooming in on the, in that dream and showing me this scripture for a particular reason. Let me read you the rest of it because I've highlighted the fear of the Lord. Then Isaiah 11, 3, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Uh, I didn't deal with eyes yet, but that was one of the things in the Levitical uh, the Levitical teachings to the priests about righteous judgment with the eyes, but I'm not going to get on a rabbit trail, but he shall not judge with the eyes, uh, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. And then we're going to go to the next scripture before I share on that, uh, that uh, spirit of the fear of the Lord. And we go to verse 4. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove. Look at that word reprove. Reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. It goes on to say, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. See, we were talking about mouth earlier. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. We go down to the next verse. Uh, now, I believe I did it in another translation. That's what I did. Uh, I think this is the NLT translation. I'm not sure. And it says, but with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and divide, uh, decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips. He shall kill the wicked. I want you to know that we are in the times that we have heard preached about for a very long time. This is the beginning of sorrow. But I want to encourage you in the midst of it, the Lord will continue to keep those that trust in him. Now, when I say keep those, does that mean that none of the righteous uh, may not, uh, none of the righteous will perish in the midst of this and go home? Probably so. Some have all already gone. I think some of you heard on CNN about the choir, 60 people uh, it, that went to choir practice, and it was before all of the stipulations were put into effect. And uh, out of those 60 people, 45 uh, contracted the coronavirus, and two uh, have died as a result of it. That's as of a few days ago. So there are the righteous that are going home, but they are still in the covenant hand and the covenant plan of God. Our times and our seasons, the Bible say, are in the hand of the Lord. We are to seek God. We are to remind God of what he said in his covenant. God does honor his word, but at the same time, we have have to obey the covenant of God. Now back to the mouth and back to the nose, having uh, the spirit of um, uh, the gift, not, not the spirit, the, the gift of discerning of spirits and concerning the mouth. I want to fast forward and I want to show you this picture next as I develop uh, part two of these two things that the Lord gave me. I think I have this picture right here. Let me see. 
Uh, no, but that's a good scripture to put up. Uh, Proverbs 18 and 21. Death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Again, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So what are you saying, Minister Pat? Be careful what comes out of your mouth during this time. I want to show you this picture. Now here on our calendar, it is the year 2020. On the Jewish calendar, it is the word uh, that uh, it is the year, uh, the 5,780th year on the Jewish calendar. And this uh, in the Jewish um, alphabets, there's so much richer than here in our alphabets. We have A, B, C, D, you know, we, but in the Jewish alphabet, there is a picture and there is a story associated with their alphabet. And you say, now what does that have to do with me? What, what, how does that amount to a hill of being? Well, do you know that the, uh, salvation was first given to the Jewish people? Do you not know uh, that the word of God was released uh, through the Jewish people and they were the one used by God through the power of the Holy Ghost to pen the Word of God. There is depth in in this depth in uh, what was taught uh, to the in, in the Jewish culture so that's so important to study it from a Hebraic Jewish aspect. So the year 5780 is the year and it means the year of the mouth. Uh, just what the Lord was showing me when I was standing in the hardware store when I adjusted the mask, he began to deal with me about the mouth and he began to deal with me about the gift of discerning of spirit. I'll develop that more in a second, but I want to show you, you have to listen to this. This is a one minute video. Uh, and it's going to detail what the year 5,780 means. And I think you're going to receive powerful illumination as you listen to this. One minute and I'll be back. The 17th letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Pe. The numeric value of Pe is 80. The pictogram or symbol behind the shape of the letter Pe is a mouth. In Hebrew, the word Pe is spelled Pe He. It means a mouth. The fifth letter of the alphabet, the letter He, also symbolized a mouth, breathing, breath, indicating spirit, revelation. The letter Pe symbolizes a mouth, speech, the spoken word, testimony. With He, the breath is drawn down and then exhaled from the heart area, the seat of emotion. Spirit first touches our heart and will. With Pe, the spoken word is received upward to the mind. The spoken word is stored and drawn upon. Out of this understanding and belief, we, in turn, speak and relay truth to others. Isn't that interesting? Uh, one of the alphabets, the uh, 17th alphabet, that Pe, breath drawn down. And then the other alphabet, the fifth alphabet, uh, but they both look similar, the mouth, both symbolic of the mouth, uh, the breath that's drawn up that touches the mind. And I know what God was saying in the midst of that, be so careful what we breathe in spiritually. There are many voices out there all type of voices. You've heard them like, like I've heard it. That's the thing about Facebook is wonderful to have, but it can also be a very deceptive tube, deceiving many. So if we want to hear the voice, it's so very important to get into the Word of God, listen to God's chosen vessel that God has given revelation, the pastors that are going forth, uh, the teachers that are going forth. I think that is so wonderful, those that are teaching the Word of God. But when we listen to any common just Joe Blow out there, we are going to be deceived. We're going to inhale uh, deception. And then as that alphabet show, then it transfers to the mind and then you'll be speaking forth the deception. These times have been prophesied from the beginning for many, many, many years. We're in perilous time. But at the same time, we're in the time that the Lord told us, the chosen people of God, that we are to look up because 
says, Our redemption draweth nigh. And Isaiah 11 that he showed me in the dream uh, that was written on that building. Do you not know, as I read it, the first part of that talked about the sevenfold anointing that was upon Jesus. But that second part that I went to, and I don't think, oh, I didn't even make a post for it. Well, I'll just tell you what it says and go and read Isaiah 11. There's very few verses in that in that uh, chapter. But uh, it begins to talk about uh, the, it, it has now in our Bibles, the wolf laying down, uh, with, with the, with the, uh, lion. But, uh, in the days of old, the original translation, the lion and the lamb, uh, lying down together, uh, side by side. Uh, that speaks of the millennium when total peace is upon the earth. And uh, I thought that interesting. Lord, you would show me Isaiah 11, speaking of the millennium. That means that the battle of Armageddon would have already occurred. The battle of Gog, I mean the battle of Gog and Magog would have already occurred. And that we, the children, are in heaven with the king, getting ready to come back for that, that final battle. And then the thousand year reign will start. That passage again points to the millennium reign. And I thought, Lord, that is so interesting. You would show me something concerning the millennium that's coming up. I can't believe I didn't put the scripture up there. Oh my goodness. But this morning, I got a phone call. A friend of mine, she had just had a dream where uh, she's a school teacher. And I'll just tell a little portion of the dream. She said she'll probably write it up and post it. But in her dream, uh, one of the children and ran up to her and uh, he said something concerning can we pay them some money to stop all of this and she said oh no honey it's time to repent he's on his way he's on his way it's time to go so that is so amazing that she would have a dream the very next day concerning Jesus coming to get his children you know whether it is right now or whether it's a little bit down the road this is what's important for us to do get our family members ready get ourselves ready first of all and get our loved ones ready. Let them know that the time is very short. Isaiah chapter 11 uh, concerning the lion and the lamb laying down together side by side speaks specifically of the millennium. Why would God show that? He wants us to set our minds on him, to lift our eyes up into the hills from whence cometh our help. I was uh, thinking about, uh, you know, there are so many that, that teach that we'll be here uh, when it, it gets its worse and that we're going to go through part of the tribulation. But I love um, uh, two stories again in the Old Testament that are types and shadows. Do you remember the story of Lot? And right before the final destruction there in Sodom and Gomorrah, a uh, lot had to be taken out. The angels let it be known that nothing can be done until we get you and your family out. Now, it's interesting that his two son-in-law that had been bound up in the bondage of the city, homosexuality, they did not develop an ear to hear what the angels were saying when they came to rescue Lot. Lot uh, went out to try to talk to the son-in-law, but that spirit had taken them over. There are so many that have been overtaken by the spirit of the world, and sadly, they will be left behind. But they will have an opportunity during the tribulation to give their hearts to Jesus, but we know that that will result in their death if they give their hearts to Jesus. So it's best to get ready to go out on the first load. Glory to God. So again, the two things that he gave me pertaining to our mouth and pertaining to the nostril, what we're breathing in and what we're speaking out. Be so careful. Let your mouth line up with the things of God. Decree the things of God. Uh, uh, things like, Lord, I thank you. You said you'd never leave me and you'd never forsake me. Lord, I thank you that I'm in your hand and that you have a plan for me. Talk to God and remind him of what he said. Amen. Again, go and read Isaiah 11. We're going to pray and uh, we're, we're going to uh, shut it down for this time. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, that you are God that's ever revealing things to your people. You promised that you would give us dreams and visions in these last days. I thank you for the dream that 
you gave my friend that call. Her dream pointed to, Lord, you coming to get us your children. Mine pointed to the millennium, which means you would have had to come and receive your children unto yourself. But you also brought out, Lord God, in that spoken word. Watch what we say from our mouth and that we're going to have to have the gift of discerning the spirits during this time because many spirits are in operation and you don't want your people to be led astray. So Father, I just speak upon us according to Isaiah 11, the sevenfold anointing that was upon Jesus. Lord, he had the spirit of counsel and might and wisdom and understanding, but he had the fear of the Lord. And Father, I'm reminded even now of a true story, one of your soldiers that went to prison and when he was interviewed uh, by another minister that went to visit him, he plainly said, and it's now up on YouTube and everywhere you can, you, uh, Father, I thank you that you've confirmed it. He said, I lost the fear of the Lord. Father, may we, your people, not lose the reverend fear of the Lord. May we draw close to you like never before. May we seek your face like never before. May we stay in your presence like never before. And that way, Lord, when that trump sound and it's time to go up, Lord God, we will be in that number. That old song said, when the saints go marching in, Lord, I want to be in that number. Well, I changed that song many years ago. I changed it to when the saints go marching in, I'm going to be in that number. I made a decision, glory to God. And I pray you have made that decision also. This is Minister Pat Holmes signing off. Again, we dealt with in this teaching what we're speaking from the mouth. We brought out that the year 5080, which is the year over in Israel, is the year of the mouth. And we brought out the scripture about the fruit of the mouth. What type of fruit of you are you producing? God bless you. Until next time, Minister Pat Holmes signing off. <laughs>
on old Golgotha's hill. Not like it was that day when Jesus died. And as far as the crowd that stood around that day, well, now they've all passed away. But yes, they saw the Holy One crucified. Now over 2,000 years have come and gone since that day on Calvary. But the blood that flowed from the fire Gospel call at that cross of wings free. 